we've heard a few people over the last day and a half talk about climate change and whether you know, belief versus knowledge. I think overwhelmingly, certainly climate scientists, oceanographers, sure. meteorologists, we, we, you can see that it's happening. I mean, there, there are obviously counterexamples, but you know, there's a big snowstorm or a big cold wave, but for every big snowstorm or big cold wave, there's five data points you have which pointing to it's warm. No, it amazes me that if you gave all seven billion people a coach airline seat, we all fit in a box that's about a cubic mile, mile by mile by mile. You can put, put 7 billion people in a cubic mile in a, a little cubic mile, so we're in this dimension, too. That's, that's, worse, that's worse than a coach seat. Yeah, it's worse than... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, 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 but you can fit everybody in that box, yet we've managed through our activity. We've changed the uh, temperature of the ocean. We've changed the chemistry of the ocean. You know, there's, uh, there's not a lot of water on Earth, despite what... How I used to lead off my TED Talks with... Uh, it's the ocean planet, 70% covered with water, average depth two and a half miles. But when you think about it, if the earth was the size of a basketball and I take all the water off the earth, it, it'll fit into a ping pong ball because the Pacific Ocean is like 12,000 miles across, average depth two and a half miles. So it's thinner than paint. And then fresh water is a few percentage of that. And you know, we have to have it in just the right places at just the right time, in just the right amounts or we have trouble. I mean, societies collapse based on that yeah, stuff. For agriculture, it's, uh, it's very important whether I mean, the there's predictions no for the Midwest are a dust bowl, right? I mean, for, for the coming next several decades, dust bowl conditions. Right. Well, that's why, I mean, of course, there are these efforts I was mentioning to try to seed uh, the clouds in the winter and build up the snowpack. Because mm -hmm. in, the, in the West, we're depending more on that snowpack. Mm -hmm. um, in, the, in the Midwest, a lot of the areas are depending on this old aquifer, you know, from glacial times. And that probably isn't going to run out in the next 10 years, but obviously, you, keep putting stress on it, agriculture keeps needing more water. But then up in the Great Lakes, you've got 20% of the world's fresh water sitting in these giant puddles up there. So it'll be interesting to see when the farmers say, we need that water. <laughs> we need the Great Lakes. Yeah, we need that um, water. What do we do? What do you do? So global. I, I think, I mean, we're up here and we're kind of whining about climate change. And yeah, I don't want a lot of other people that. whining about climate change. Yep. Um, but uh, do you think there's anything we can do about it is going to happen. It has a reasonable chance of happening. Sure, you know, I have solar oh, panels. Oh, changing light bulbs? Oh, and, uh, yeah, right. I have energy efficient light bulbs and I have solar panels on my house. But, yeah. you know, that's, even if we all do that, I'm not sure it, well, that makes it, such a big percentage change when you're faced with other large forcing terms, like a billion more people or every Chinese person and Indian person getting an air conditioner. I mean, there's things which are... Clearly, more CO2 huge. in the atmosphere is going to cause a problem because the oceans are becoming acidic. They absorb about a third of all the atmosphere anthropogenic carbon dioxide. When that gets into the ocean, it makes ocean water into carbonic acid, which means if you're a fish and you want to make a skeleton or you want to make a shell, you're screwed. Uh, so, and that's global, and, and there's no doubt about that. So just even for, for a common sense reason, we shouldn't put more into the atmosphere than we absolutely have to put into the atmosphere. Let me ask my cynical question in another way then. Yeah. I guess the United States, you know, we're a nice rich country. We can say, hey, we're going to do certain things. We're going to yeah. do expensive farming practices. We're going to have expensive light bulbs. Sure. We're going to have expensive energy. You know, um, but I just have a hard time seeing that developing countries are going to make that even their 20th priority. Of course. Um, and there's, there's if those are the big forcing terms. If those are the places where lots of carbon dioxide can keep coming, I think part it, of what it, we need to do is adapt, is sort of accept that we're going to have a big chunk of it. Yeah. Not, we, you know, we can't be climate change deniers either. If we're willing to accept the consequences you know, that, uh, of not changing, we don't have to change anything. In fact, we'll probably do fine. I mean, humanity has survived through the giant climate shifts of the ice, ice, uh, ice caps uh, expanding and contracting ex several times. You know, people are going to die, you're going to have climate refugees. Humanity is not at risk. In fact, I, and, and the ecosystem will Humanity survive too. It will be a different ecosystem. I'm all for that. Of course I the ecosystem agree with you survive. completely. You know, we are heading into unknown waters. Mm -hmm. We really are. Uh, not knowing what's coming next, and that always screws us. As a society, that always screws us. Mm -hmm. So we can either be content, again, to just let it go, like the Titanic, through the dark of night, see what happens, or we can actually try to do something. It sounds very, you know, bad to say, you know, accept the inevitable. Um, but some part of climate change is inevitable. Um, and I don't feel like we have a very coherent strategy towards dealing with it. It's just we're very bad at long-range planning, and I don't see, you know... Any planning. I mean, we're talking about, you know, we're in an election <laughs> year. I don't see any candidate now saying, Laughing. hey, we have to allocate $50 billion for future levies for Miami. Um, that kind of long-range planning doesn't happen much. We need to change, at some point, start thinking as a planet. Um, because we are, for whether we like it or not, all in this boat together.
so this idea that people work for money. So I, um, I read a little bit about Odom. There's a guy. Oh, Lamar. And Lamar Odom, yeah. My, my understanding is that he, <laughs> you paid him a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. And then he came and there was, and he basically kind of, like the whole season didn't play. Yeah. And, and it, it, it suggests to me that I'm an this idiot. was not the story for the money. <laughs> you what? It suggests to me that I'm an idiot. Yeah. No, no, but 